Hello and welcome back to yaymath.org's presentation of Yaymath in Studio. I'm Robert Adut and I'm standing in the beautiful YouTube Space headquarters in Los Angeles, California. I did my stretches earlier this morning so I could just be best for you and share this love of math and this love of learning that I have with you through this forum. So thank you for the chance to be with you during this brief moment. And I hope it helps. I hope you learn a lot and I hope it's fun in the process. All right, if you wanna say yay math with me, one, two, three, yay math! <laughs> Not everyone needs to say it. <laughs> um, but if you want to, you may. So I kind of like this section. Uh, I practice my cursive writing. The only time I write in cursive is when I'm cutting checks. So I have a little bit of cursive game left in me. And that's why I chose cursive here because it's writing equations. Uh, we are going to write equations. And what's cool about this type of writing is that we're reminded that this equation is a math language equation in hiding. Right now it's in English. Clearly we see four times a number increased by 10 is 22. But we can translate this English into the language of math. So let's try that. Four times a number. Four times a number, you can say in this little part, would be four times x, right? And in a sense, we don't need the dot. So we have four times x. Increased by, so when you say, uh, you know, the temperature increased by something, we know that it went up with addition. It increased by 10 or increased by, oh, there it is, increased by 10. We could put that down would be an addition of 10. So we could say plus 10. Is, in math land, is translates to equals, because that means is the same as. Then we have the number 22. So there it is. We just translated this English equation into a math equation. This is the universal language of math, and this is something that anyone that knows math can solve. It doesn't matter what language they speak. So being able to toggle between a verbal equation and a math equation is the task of this particular video. Let's try it again. 15 less than something. Interesting. So now, the reason I chose this example is that sometimes when translating English to math, we can't just translate in order, as tempting as it would be. Because to say 15 less than, I'll show you a common mistake, would be like 15 less than. But that's not what 15 less than means, right? If I said that I have $100 on me, right? And someone said, I have 15 less than that. I have 15 less than that. That would mean that you have to take the 15 off at the end, okay? So when you say 15 less than, you have to have a little foresight and a little patience to say, all right, we're gonna move the 15 to the end and say, whatever we do, we're gonna do some math and we'll do 15 less than that thing. So don't be, um, try not to be tempted to just translate directly every single time, like we did here, okay? So we'll come back to the 15 less than. In fact, we'll put it in blue so that we'll keep track of it. Triple a number squared, okay. Triple a number squared. So the number is being squared. What does squared mean? It means multiplied by itself. So let's put that in green maybe. Oh, pick that up. So a number squared would be n and then squared. And then triple that. So when I say um, I have triple uh, the amount, I want a chocolate cake with triple the amount of chocolate that would mean three times, right? Whenever that happens, you're welcome to use these real world examples that speak to you. Triple of something means three times that thing. So there's triple a number squared, 15 less than this. So now we're bringing in our blue friend and gravity, minus 15. And then we have back to is, and 12 translates directly. So now we can look at it in hindsight, 15 less than three times a number squared or triple a number squared is 12, okay? Let's do it 
in reverse. Now we're given the math equation and now our job is to turn it into English. All right, see if you can do this, right? Be one beat ahead of me. We see x squared. So you're welcome to say x squared, or you can be formal about it. You could say a number squared. You know, that would be fine. So let's do it. A number squared plus, you could say plus, or you could say increased by. Do we have that? Yes. Okay, so let's do that. Plus, why not? Make it simple. Plus three times that number, you could say as well. Three times that number. I see equals, so that means is, is 10. Right. So now we went from math land to English land. Okay. We can do it again. The reason I picked this one is just to give you a little bit of that vocabulary. So we're welcome to say a number divided by eight. You're totally fine to say that. A number divided by eight. But I want to introduce you to the word quotient, which is basically divide. So that would mean you could say a, the quotient. The quotient of. The quotient. Quotient of a number and eight. And that's basically code for a number divided by eight. The quotient of a number and eight is equal to, you can say that if you want, or you could say is the same as. And now with this minus, you could say x minus y, or another number and a third number. But in a sense, you're welcome to say x, right? We don't have to overcomplicate it. So we could say minus, but instead of minus, I want to introduce you to the word difference, right? So the one I introduce this to students sometimes to, to explain what difference is, is I would say, what's the difference in our ages? And they immediately know to subtract. And every year that number gets bigger for some reason. I don't know why, because they always stay the same and I get, I age. <laughs> but nevertheless, the lesson is learned. And so we have a difference between two numbers. The difference, difference um, between x and y. So there's multiple paths to the mountaintop. You could say x minus y, x decreased by y, or the difference of x and y. Just introducing to different ways to toggle between math language and English. Okay, the last problem within this particular task would be to create an equation. Some people say math is not creative. I disagree. Math can be highly creative. I'll give you an example of how. So let's say you had some variable d, which represents the number of days uh, renting a car. You could say something like that. Number of days when you rent a car. So if D was three, that would mean we rented the car for three days. And then we could say M, that would be the number of miles we drive. Number of miles driven during this particular rental. So now, can we create some math equation involving these two variables? There's lots of things we can do, right? The, uh, the big question to me with regards to renting a car would be like how much it costs to rent that car. So if we're going to make an equation, we can make up some numbers. You know, let's say just throwing out a number like uh, it costs $20 a day to rent the car. Let's say it was something like that. So if it was $20 a day to rent the car, if you had the car for five days, it would be 20 times five. If you had the car for six days, it'd be 20 times six. If you had the car for D days, it would be 20 times D. So that would mean 20 D would be the start of the equation, right? Assuming it's $20 a day to rent the car. And let's say you get charged for the number of miles we drive, okay? And then we would make up a number for the number of miles we drive, maybe 
15 cents or something like that. I don't, I don't know if these numbers are realistic or accurate, but let's just say it was like 15 cents, you know, just as an example. So this is 15 cents times the number of miles we drive. Okay, so this is $20 per day. This is 15 cents per uh, mile. And then the total cost would be adding them. And then you could say like maybe this equal to if you wanted to do a $100 rental there. So our job was to create an equation involving these two uh, variables. And we just did 20 times the number of days plus 15 cents times the number of miles is equivalent to $100. And there's the equation for how much we're charged when renting a car. Okay, we could have done this in infinite ways. But just to give you a, a sense of how to write equations based on English data, turning them into math data. All right. Thank you so much for watching this. Okay, I hope it helped you. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.